Welcome to the Holly Area Community Show. I'm your host, Jody, and I am sitting here in my smart girl glasses because I'm at the Holly Library with the local librarian, Joy Becker. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Jody. We like to come here when the seasons change. And the season changed a little while ago, but it's feeling very wintry. And we like to come because you've always got different events with the change of the seasons, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So why don't you just enlighten us a little bit what's going on here during these winter months? Well, we have one of my favorite promotions at the library and during the winter months, during January and February, we have a reading promotion. For every four books you read, you can enter to win door prizes. Things for like grown-ups too? For, it's just for grown-ups. It's just for grown-ups, Just okay. for grown-ups. And it's All fun right. things like books and cups and our oh. book lovers, calendars and things like that. So for every four books, it doesn't matter if it's a, a book book or an audio book or an e-book. All, all those count. You can enter online. You can enter the four titles online, or you can bring in a slip here at the library with the four titles in your name. And we do weekly drawings through the end of February. And you just trust people. You don't need, like, yeah. I don't need my mom to sign off for me nope. or anything. That's one of the nope. great things about being a grown-up is, is <laughs> the trust. That's and really great. I don't even mind if they're not library books. Really? As long as you're reading four books. Put him on your slip. Wow. And so is this the first year you've done this? or have No, you... we do it every winter. Oh, cool. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah. Okay. What else you got? Well, for our wrap-up for the hot reads, we're doing a soup and swap at the end of February. We're going to have a, a soup potluck and ask everyone to bring in a couple of the best titles that they read through the winter months to share with people. Okay. And we've got some genealogy things coming up. There's an afternoon where we're going to do hands-on genealogy, and we've done some how-to classes, but mm -hmm. this is going to be hands-on, bring in your information and, and just start digging. Really? People seem to really, certain people seem to yep. really love genealogy. Yep. Yeah. I we're bet trying, that's popular. It yeah. is. It is. And we're trying to get the kids interested, too. So we've got one afternoon set up where grandparents are invited to bring their grandchildren in on a Saturday and find out where their grandparents, or great-grandparents as it may be, lived in 1940 Aww. because the census was just released last year. I see. What a great idea. Yeah. So that should be really fun. Yeah, like an intergenerational <laughs> thing. Yep. Yeah. We've got some other fun things for the kids, too. We're continuing our story time on Fridays at 1030, and we've got our Lego nights the second Thursday of the month. Is that for grown-ups? Well, if they want. Okay, anybody gets to go to the Lego <laughs> night, okay. <laughs> and we've got, we're going to do a craft night um, one of the other Thursdays. So almost every Thursday there'll be an event for kids. There'll be a craft oh. afternoon, there'll be a fun afternoon. We're going to play frog bingo and events like that throughout the next couple of months. Okay. So those are usually Thursdays at 4. Thursdays at 4, okay, yep. so that right after school. and yep. okay, kind of in that good time of day. Okay. And we've got some more legacy events coming up. Closer to on to February, though, we've got a Minnesota guitarist who's going to be coming and talking about how to play and maybe give us some tips. Mm -hmm. And the Historical Society from Ottersale County is going to be coming to talk about the Kirkbride Building, the former state hospital in Fergus Falls. Oh, wow. Talk about the history of that building. and Wow. But the, the stories those walls could tell, yes, huh? Yes. Yeah. And I know they're still struggling to find a use for that building, hopefully, really? before it gets torn down so oh. that it won't get torn down. But Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a um, historical information to try and Interesting. Generate support for that as well. Um, we also have our book discussion group going on this year, and this year we're just doing Minnesota authors. So I'm really excited because we're going to learn different genres throughout the, the year. We're going to mm -hmm. be picking mystery authors and suspense, and may, may, there, I think there might even be a Western in there. Really? Uh, but they're all from Minnesota. The books may not necessarily be set in Minnesota, but all the authors are Minnesotans. Wow. That's great. You have a lot shaken. We're going to take a little break and hear more about what's going on here at the library. We'll be right back. And we're back with Joy Becker, the local librarian at the Holly Library. And we're just talking about events going on in the winter. But as I was walking in, I did notice a little sign, and it said, um, self-check. Mm -hmm. And I've never noticed that before, and I've never done that before. So could you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. The self-check computer is used for most patrons when I'm busy or when they want to check out their own books uh, all they need is to bring in their library card because there's a barcode on the back and they just scan it under the barcode scanner it'll bring up their account they can check out their books by scanning the barcodes on the front of the book it's like every book's got a barcode on the front okay and then um, they can also see what they've got checked out so they can click on a different screen and if they need to renew anything they can do it right on that screen Wow. If is it easy to navigate through? Like, yep. will you be it's, instructed? It's all touch screen. Oh. So it's super easy. You just okay. click on what you want to click on and, and move okay. on to the next screen. If they've ordered any books in, 
it'll list it'll list those in a different screen. You just click on the hold screen and it'll see if they're there. If they're ready if they're here and ready to pick up already, it'll say ready to pick up right at the bottom of the screen. So Wow, that's incredible. Nice. Yeah. Are people using it? Every day. Yeah. Every day people use it, so you don't even have to to have you here. Well, sometimes. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I didn't mean that. That wasn't very nice of you to say. Of course you need to be here because people do like to yep. interact with people at the library but too. But it right? frees me up and, and the staff that, that work at the libraries, it frees us up to be able to answer more questions and more in-depth questions. Sure. Because we're not um, having to stop and check out a book and put off the person with the question. That makes sense. Which yeah. Nice. And the kids love it. Do they? Yes. I bet, because they get to act all grown yeah. up. Yeah. It's intimidating for me at the store, I mm. will say, but this is a little different. It's a little different, yeah. and it's kind of nice. A lot of folks will, because they're used to being in a store, they'll scan the barcode on the back, oh. and that makes a bonk noise instead oh. of a bink noise. So they know they have to look. just keep an eye on the screen and make sure the books you're checking out are showing up on the screen. I see. Yep. Okay. Now, um, do you have many people that do the online, the e-book thing? Yes. Or you do? More and more all the time. Because mm. it works with your Kindle or your Nook or your phone. Yeah. All those different apps. And uh, it's easier than ever. They're, they just opened up an OverDrive app last year, which made it easier if you have a phone to download the library books because it's, it's linked right in. You don't have to cook it up to a computer all the time. Because okay. some of them used to make, we used to have to download to a computer and transfer it over. Okay. You don't have to do that anymore. And this year, it sounds like they're coming out with a one-click download. So instead of stepping through all the different steps we have to step through now to get that book onto your Nook or Kindle, it'll just be a one-click download. Wow. I'm pretty excited Wouldn't about. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes I get a little lost in the whole navigation yeah. of something. Right. Wow. So those are two ways to get books. And then do you have, <laughs> you have just the standard way that if someone yeah. just wants to come, Put the book down on the desk. Yep. You will help them with that. Right? I will help them with that. With the Kindles and the, and the notebooks, you don't even have to come into the library to download those. You can download them anywhere you have internet access. Isn't but if that you're incredible? stuck, that's incredible. That is incredible. Yeah. But if they're stuck or have questions, I'd like to let, know how to set it up. I'd be happy to help. Okay, yeah. super. And winter is such a good time to come to the library yep. and get some books and sit by the fireplace or whatever. Yep. It's so nice not to have to go out and get books. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. We do such a great job here. It's uh, such a pleasant place to be, and we'd love to come back. <laughs> Thank so, you, Joey. Um, I guess that's it, right, for winter. And so we'll be looking towards spring when that time comes. Sounds good. Okay, take care. <laughs> you too. Until next time.